Welcome back to Wine and Winds. I'm your host, KP, a marine biologist with a decade's worth of experience working with marine mammals. Now everyone knows that animals like seals or sea otters can hold their breath and stay underwater for exceptionally long periods of time. But not everyone knows about the unique adaptations that make that possible. So today, we're taking our deepest dive yet into the hows and whys these animals can dive so deep. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and dive down to the descriptions below for ways that you can help support the channel. For the sake of comparison, let's start with humans. Now I've personally held my breath for a measly about a minute or so and dove to a depth of eight meters or 26 feet. But that is nothing compared to the current No Limits world record holder, Herbert Nietzsche, who held his breath for four minutes while diving to a depth of 214 meters. That's more than two football fields. Unfortunately, he suffered severe decompression sickness and required extensive rehabilitation just to be able to walk again. Unlike Herbert Nietzsche, I don't usually free dive for sport. I need some real motivation to hold my breath for that long. And that reason at work is usually to retrieve foreign items. Marine mammals are the same. They need a good reason to dive to the deepest parts of the ocean, food. Sea otters find their food in the shallow kelp beds of the North Pacific. Sea urchin, clams, oysters. So they don't need to dive too deep. Plus, it's not all that easy for them. Their fur is incredibly buoyant, and that makes deeper dives impractical. Their average dives are only about six to 10 meters or 20 to 30 feet, and typically only last one to two minutes. Their deepest recorded dive was about 80 meters and lasted almost eight minutes. If you want to find out more about how vital sea otters are to the kelp beds of the North Pacific, click on this video right up here, our very first deeper dive. Harbor seals prey on fish like herring or salmon that typically hide in the refuge of deeper water in the daylight hours. So they're forced to dive a little deeper. Averaging around 152 meters, but dives up to 446 meters have been recorded. That's deeper than the test depth of a nuclear submarine. This is similar to stellar sea lions who have basically the same diet. Yeah. But their cousins, elephant seals, are some of the deepest diving animals on the planet. They mostly feed on benthic fish like rays and skates that live on the bottom of the ocean floor. So these seals will dive up to 1,500 meters in search of food. That's nearly a mile underwater. And they'll do it by holding their breath for about an hour and a half. All pinnipeds, like seals and sea lions, have unique adaptations that make these deeper dives possible. They can slow their heart rate from 100 beats a minute down to three or four beats a minute during these extreme dives. You also might be surprised to learn that the resting position of their nostrils is actually closed, meaning they actually have to flex their nostrils in order to open them and breathe. A pretty handy adaptation if you're doing a deep dive. Now, sea otters don't have this nostril adaptation, but fun bonus fact, sea otters' nostrils are actually heart-shaped. Baleen whales, like humpback whales, don't actually dive that deep in comparison to pinnipeds. They feed on shrimp, krill, and small fish that tend to live nearer to the surface of the ocean. Their deeper dives have been recorded at around 200 meters or roughly the same as Herbert Nietzsche and the deepest free diver in the world. Okay. 
but sperm whales and Cuvier's beaked whale are some of the deepest divers in the world. Sperm whales dive to about a thousand meters and feed on things like giant squid and octopus. and Cuvier's beaked whale is the deepest diver in the sea. They've been recorded reaching depths of around 3,000 meters. That's almost two full miles underneath the surface of the ocean. And they did it by holding their breath for over three hours. These numbers are so shockingly large that it's hard for me to wrap my head around them. But what I do know is these deeper dives are dangerous. Just like humans, marine mammals are susceptible to decompression sickness. Also known as the bends, decompression sickness happens when sudden decompression causes nitrogen bubbles to build up in the tissues and bloodstream. To prevent this from happening, marine mammals will limit how fast they come back to the surface. Just like human divers will make safety stops as they begin their ascent after a dive. However, many stranded animals have been found to have symptoms related to decompression sickness. Biologists are working hard to pin down a cause that would make a marine mammal surface too quickly. And the evidence they've found so far points to noise pollution as a culprit. Sonar, seismic mapping, and shipping noise all could cause marine mammals to surface too rapidly. So here comes the call to action. What can you and I do to reduce noise pollution in the ocean. The first and easiest step is to shop local. This will reduce shipping traffic in general. The second is by raising awareness. A proposed plan by the US Navy to increase sonar testing in the Puget Sound was met with strong opposition and led to a proposal to increase whale buffer zones. It also required the Navy to use real-time whale alert systems like those required by the local ferries. So now you tell me, where's the deepest you've ever dove? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time on our deeper dive. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, head over to my Twitch channel where we have live discussions about all things marine mammal.